vlogging friends, I'm in a car again. I am in the north of England this time in sunny old Lancashire. I'm with my father, there he is, hello. And we're off to find a World War II dump out by the estuary. I'm not sure what we're gonna find. So the first half of this video might be in Lancashire and the second half might be in London. Um, hopefully we'll find some really exciting stuff. So let's see what we can find. try and film as much of this journey as I can. It's a bit of a fly tipping zone here. If anyone fancies a sofa, there's one going. That's where we want to be. Down there. Seems like a funny thing to do. go cross country. It's just across there. Alright, we're still on the moon and uh, we're gonna we're gonna find another way through here. So this is the way we're gonna go. Still ably assisted by Mon Père, who's not yet fed up but he might be at some time soon because it's really chucking it down. There's a nice bit of uh, Liverpool Beatles reminder for you. That's lovely. What do you say to that, Dad? Very good. <laughs> Are you being shy because you're on camera? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Here we go, chaps. The estuary is looming. I want to get down onto. Wow. Exciting. There we go, smashing, here we are, <laughs> nice one, so dad any, any little metal bits are going to be down here in this drag, coins and things, he's not listening to me, he'll probably find the best find of the day, what's that? Plow shear. Yeah. Oh right. My dad grew up in a rural farming community and my grandfather, his dad was a farmer. So farm stuff, car stuff, mechanic stuff. Dad's the person to ask. Dad, what's this? I always find these, but I don't know what they are. Do you know? No, it's a little sort of... A little something. A widget of a song here, isn't it? It's a widget. I'm not sure where it is. I like these little widget things. I've got one on a necklace. Keep that. A bit of clay pipe. What's that? It is a bit of clay pipe. Tiny piece. I just spotted this little thing here. Screw top, maybe a base of something. A little mount for, I don't know, maybe a light or something. Quite cute. A stone there with a heart on. That's going to come home. And yeah. oh, there's a bit of clay pipe. It's immense around here. I absolutely love it, guys. It is just so fab. Where? Oh, some. Some lighting, ducting. What's this? Ah, well, that's a keeper, isn't it? Heath S. Not sure what it is. Slightly curved, probably some garden pot or something. I don't know. But that's a keeper. Homestead. Not sure if you can read that. Heath and Hersey. Heaton, oh here we go, right, Heaton, 
Mersey. Mansfield, maybe? Found this key, little modern key, which is kind of cute. We are getting down to the beach. I didn't bring my detector with me. Um, oh, big buckle there. I've seen people online detecting down here. I do have a detector, I didn't bring it with me today. I just thought I'd leave our finds to chance and luck. Oh God, look at this. Lovely. One way or another, that's coming home. Neo-Gothic, Pujan kind of design tile. That is a keeper. Who knows how modern, but what a beautiful thing. That's coming home. Oh, and a bit of rain pipe. Drain. <laughs> bit of drain pipe. Oh, that's really cool as well. Drain with a back to front N. Hmm. Well, Dad, I'm taking this tile home, so I'm just going to let this dry out a bit. Whoa, he's throwing a teapot lid at me. Thank you. <laughs> Tin teapot lid. This area named Dungeon has nothing to do with prisons or castles. It actually originates from the old English word denge or dunge, meaning marshland. All the brick we're seeing here now, this is all World War II blitz rubble cleared from Liverpool. And you'll also see other World War II artifacts as we explore. Did you notice the large concrete pyramids? Here's a couple of motors sticking out of the foreshore and some more of those pyramid anti-tank blocks just hanging around. Just over to our left there are some really large sandstone slabs. There's a wooden jetty, it looks like the remains of a jetty, leading down to the estuary. Then at the very end of the sandstone blocks here there's also a broken up ship. So this was once a shipbreaker's yard right here. We're going to just try and make our way down here without slipping. <laughs> what happened? Wind nearly blew me over. <laughs> What's this one? That's interesting. T M L N R N. Oh God! Look, it's got a skull and crossbones. Dad, look at this. Skull and crossbones. Ah, oh, this is awesome. T N L N R N. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a Land Rover. So. Steering wheel. So that's the front end. Oh yeah. I could imagine that being a Land Rover. A what? A sea rover. <laughs> There's Dad with the jokes. It's a sea rover, not a Land Rover anymore. this well it looks like a soda bottle oh that's wedged right in there what is this 
open sores something I don't know I'm gonna take that home because it's complete it's not that old but uh, it's a nice bottle I don't have as much time here as I'd like dad's quite keen to get back but there are really distinct areas here there are big metal areas um, swathes of bricks and big kind of pottery areas lots of garden pottery and then obviously smaller metal items I think next time I come I'll bring a metal detector with me and I'll, I'll probably come for a bit longer I might get my dad to chop me off and then leave me here for a good few hours because unless you're really into this I think the boredom sets in quite quickly so I'm off to go and find my tile and then we're gonna make our way back <laughs> seem to encounter very strange people and uh, just walked up back from the estuary I saw this chap in the, in the woods and thought hey I'm going to go out on here and as we passed him he appeared to be holding a flute and uh, he was just standing on a um, tree stump playing a flute just down by the estuary so um, you know whatever floats your boat that's quite cool I hope you got some of his flute playing I did record it what do you think of him, Dad? Crackers. Crackers? Mm. Oh, there you are then. You got my dad's take on it. Right, we're done at the estuary now and uh, we're back off home. There's Dad cleaning up my pipe. Uh, not pipe, uh, bottle. Bottle. We're off home now. What's he doing? Blowing the flute. Like tooting the flute. Wind's blowing a gaily. There's the old papa. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks for taking me and my uh, watching people Strange. to the um, yeah. estuary. So just to reiterate, that was a man standing on a tree stump playing Amazing Grace on a flute. In the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. So Raining. I don't know. Raining. Like a fawn. All right. Well, there's what we can see now. We haven't been stopped for trespassing. Uh, at this airport. So that's all good. Right, catch up with you soon guys. Bye bye. Seems like a funny thing to do. Now let's head back to the foreshore for an update on that interesting stone. When I first spotted this enormous chunk of sandstone, I of course thought of an ancient grave marker or memorial stone. However, being a realist, I didn't want to jump to that conclusion because, well, what are the chances? I started researching the minute I got home and also got in touch with a number of intertidal archaeologists and historians. Despite my cynicism, following discussions and research, we all think, even with its unlikely shape and size, that this sandstone slab might very well be a 17th century memorial or grave marker. But for who? After the discovery of rock salt in Cheshire in 1670, new salt refineries popped up around the Mersey, making the most of this burgeoning rock salt industry. One of those refineries was built exactly where we were mudlarking at Dungeon. It was called the Dungeon Salt Works. Flatboats and barges brought rock salt across the river from Cheshire to Dungeon, where it was refined before being shipped onwards. Carrying on with my research, I discovered that one of the major pioneers of the 17th century salt industry was a gentleman named Richard Norris of the old Lancashire House of Norris. He was the grandson of Sir William Norris, knighted after fighting for the Lancastrians at the Battle of Stoke. Sir William Norris oversaw the construction of nearby Speak Hall, where future Norrises would come to live. Richard Norris of Speak Hall, Sheriff of Lancashire, and a powerful member of Parliament, was instrumental in ensuring the salt works were a success. Now, remember the initials on the sandstone? T-N-L-N-R-N. -N -N. Could the three initials on the sandstone relate to Richard Norris, 
his ancestor Thomas Norris and Letitia Norris, wife of Thomas, but also a Norris herself pre-marriage, a distant relation from the West Derby branch of the Norrises. Richard, Thomas and Letitia are all mentioned in various early 20th century reference books regarding Speak Hall and the Salt Works, it having been of some importance to them. Another clue I found came from the inventory of Speak Hall. The Norrises carved a number of stones with their initials and symbols or dates when building parts of Speak Hall. So, am I reaching here with my theories, or could this sandstone slab be in memoriam of three Norrises who were pivotal in the progress of the Dungeon Salt Works? I don't have the answer right now, guys, but stay tuned because I hope to get up there again in the near future. We'll do some more filming and see if we can come to some kind of definitive answer as to what this slab is. All that remains to be said is thanks as ever for watching and for subscribing to my channel. Keep commenting. I love engaging with you guys and I will see you back in London for another mudlarking adventure.